Today we are reviewing Endless Nightmare. You may remember that I covered another game, Oniram, about walking through a labyrinth of dreams interrupted by nightmares. But in Endless Nightmare, your dreams are nothing but nightmares, and a variety of them at that. You are trying to escape a never-ending cycle of nightmares. Never-ending, that is, until the shadow catches up with you. So, is this a, uh, shall we say, uh, pleasant way to kill time? Or is it simply a nightmare of a game? Let's find out. Here's the playload. Nightmare is very possibly one of the easiest print and plays available, short of something that only requires you to print out the rules. Um, you only have the one board, which fits on a sheet of paper, and you have the one die board, which also fits on a sheet of paper, but you don't need it if you're playing the basic game only for the active game. So let's talk about the basic game first. Since this is a print and play game, you need to provide your own bits. You're going to need 11 markers, which can be cubes or coins or even bingo chips, and you'll need one die. In Endless Nightmare, you are trying to stay ahead of the shadow. This is you. This is the shadow. This track keeps track of the number of nightmares you've survived so far. You'll see that you also have tracks on the side for various other things. So the first three tracks are for your sanity. This is for the horrors you've witnessed, the incantations you recite to protect yourself from the effects of the horrors, and your sanity. Likewise, you have courage tracks. You have the scares you've experienced, you have the mantras you recite, to keep yourself calm, and you have your courage. If your sanity or your courage ever go down to zero, you also lose the game. You're also going to need a marker to, end the, to mark the end of your current nightmare, and another marker to mark your current nightmare. So let's go through a turn of Endless Nightmare. You're going to need the D6, as I've said. So the first thing is that if you don't have a current nightmare, you need to randomly select one, or in another version of the game, you can choose your nightmares with this restriction that you can't choose a nightmare, the same nightmare, more than once. So let's randomly choose a nightmare. We roll a 5, so that chooses the second column, and we roll another 5, which chooses... One, two, three, four, five, which chooses the uh, Temptation Dream. Actually, I have not yet played the Temptation Dream, so we're going to put it on the Monsters Dream, um, which I am unfortunately very familiar with. Once you've selected your nightmare, there's a number in, par in parentheses beside the nightmare that says how long it is. So, for instance, this nightmare is eight long, so we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we place the dream end marker. So now our goal is to progress all the way to the end of the dream without ever being adjacent to the shadow. In the next part of your turn is the nightmare event. Some nightmares have special nightmare events, some nightmares have actions have events that happen during your actions. But in the monster's nightmare, there's one nightmare event. You need to roll a four to six in order to move. If you roll a one to three, you have to choose to do something else. So we've rolled a six so we can choose to move or to do any of our other actions. Now the action phase is interesting because you're not so much selecting the number of times that you're doing the action as much as you're betting on what the die roll will be. 
So for instance, say that I want to move by three spaces on the progress track. If I roll a four, five, or six, or three, I will be able to move because I will have successfully guessed that the roll is um, at least three. However, if I said I wanted to move by three and I rolled a two or a one, I would be out of luck and I wouldn't move because I lost the bet. So that is very clearly a push your luck element. There are other elements of push your luck that are here. For instance, one of the push your luck elements is to say, okay, so I've gotten too many scares. Suppose that I had like, suppose that I had two scares above my current level of mantra. That means that at the end of the turn, I'm going to lose a courage because of that. So maybe, maybe I'm going to say, okay, and suppose that the shadow was here instead of all the way down there. Then I would be pushing my luck to say, okay, so I'm going to bet that the shadow is not going to move and that I can defy scares or increase my mantras to make up for this and not lose courage. So there are many aspects of push your luck here that aren't as obvious as the simple die roll. So the various actions you can pick are to defy horrors, basically reduce the horror track. You can increase your incantations, which will allow you to basically buffer yourself from horrors, because if the horrors are ever above the incantations, you will lose the sanity. The same thing applies for the scares versus mantras and the courage track. If your scares are ever ahead of your mantras, you lose a courage. Now, the thing about courage is that you can heal it by calming yourself. So you can increase the courage track, but you can never increase the sanity track. Any sanity you lose is lost forever. You can choose to spend sanity, though, to adjust the die roll by plus or minus two, but again, that, ro that um, lowers your ability to survive the nightmares, but sometimes you may need to do that to increase your score. Now, after you choose your action, you need to roll the die to see how far the shadow moves. So at the beginning of the game, on four, fives, and sixes, the shadow doesn't move at all. I'll move on a one, two, or three by one space. But as the game goes on, and as you survive more nightmares, this, the rolls will start to get modified down more and more. So if I had survived two nightmares, this four would effectively be a two, and the shadow would move one clockwise. If instead I had survived four nightmares, this four would effectively be a zero, and the shadow would move two spaces instead of just one. So as you can see, the shadow just gets more and more aggressive the more dreams you've survived. And then after the shadow moves, you need to roll to see if you experience a scare or horror. Four, fives, and sixes don't do anything. A three will increase your horror, and a one or two will increase your scares. So horrors aren't as common as scares, but horrors do reduce your sanity, which you can't increase, and scares are more self-healing. Well, not self-healing, you just choose to heal it. And that's the game. Every nightmare is vastly different from all the others. For instance, in the spider's dream, every time you move, you will increase your scare track. So do you move often and always increase your scares, or do you stop to execute mantras to cal and to calm yourself and to reduce the scares? There's a lot of push your luck elements to it, and if for a push your luck game, it is surprisingly complex. Now that's the basic version of the game. The active version of the game has you doing quite a few more things. In the basic version, you are fairly passive, but in the active version, you are doing more things with dexterity. Now again, every nightmare is very different. For instance, in the nightmare about blindness, whenever you roll the d6, if you want to move, you have to close your eyes and try to touch the die. If you don't successfully do so, um, you don't get the... I did it! You don't get the juicy prize inside of a three. Some dreams will require you to roll on the die board. So rolling on the die board requires 
um, hitting the hitting the table once and then getting onto the board. And this time the pips on the die don't matter. It's where you land on the board that does. So that wasn't a very good roll. That landed outside of the die board, which counts as a one. So if you're very dexterous, you can uh, sort of control how the die, what your die is, what your die roll is. That was a good one. That is a five. If it had fallen here, it would have been a four. So the there and there are interesting wrinkles that all the dreams add. So for instance, you need six additional markers to play the um, to play the active game. For instance, in one of the in one of the um, monster in the monster nightmare, yeah. Wherever you roll the die on the die board, you replace it with a marker. And if you roll to move and you hit it, you can't move. Ah. I'm getting really lucky. That was not as good a move. And see, I hit that so I wouldn't be able to move. Very fun. The active version also uses timers for instance in the old factory dream where you were constantly moving backwards in the basic version. In the active version you're only moving backwards every 15 seconds. And if you have a timer on your phone, which most people do, that's pretty easy to accomplish. Well, it's pretty easy to measure. Not, not as easy to accomplish because of the time pressure. As I said, every nightmare is different. That's a great bit of variety to this little push your luck game. So, my final thoughts on Endless Nightmare. It is one of the most novel push your luck games I have ever experienced. And the theme is so tightly tied to its mechanics that it becomes very intense indeed. And the choice of theme, Nightmares, is itself a very intense and personal um, theme. It's one thing to battle imaginary dragons or to envision yourself as Frodo dropping the ring into Mount Doom, but it's another thing entirely to be buried alive in a nightmare. Like most push your luck games, Endless Nightmare isn't complex in its rule set, but the nerve wracking tension comes from the choices that you make with incomplete knowledge. In this case, how the die rolls are going to turn out. And in Endless Nightmare, there's not one element of pushing your luck or even a couple elements of it. There are multiple layers of pushing your luck. You push your luck when you choose your action, and there are multiple actions you choose from, so you're pushing your luck with each type of action. Um, your, the pushing of your luck is also very situational. Like I said in the previous uh, footage, that you could get into a situation where you have to reduce your scares or you're gonna lose because of courage and but the night but shadow is right behind you do you bet that the shadow doesn't move or do you bet that the scares don't increase for you and i feel that endless nightmare gives you a lot more options to explore than most push your luck games do my only concern about the game and also my greatest compliment to the game is that it generates a lot of tension for such a small game we are talking sweat um dripping tension and it's because of the theme and it's because of the mechanics and it's because of the relentlessness of the shadow for me Endless Nightmare hit a little too close to home, but perhaps other people won't be as affected. I still like Endless Nightmare regardless, and I went through the extra step of mounting it on chipboard because I'm keeping it in my collection. For keeps. I can't play it in rapid succession at all because of the topic matter, but it is so well done a push your luck game that it outshines all the others, except for the theme. The theme is very, very good and very, very well implemented, and in this case, a little too well implemented. It's perhaps ironic that a theme can be so well done 
and then become so off-putting. As a result, for its novelty, its exploration of a um, intense topic, and its mechanics, and the fact that even as a push-your-luck game, as simple as those are, this has a larger exploration space than most. This particular game earns the solo boarding seal of excellence. I highly recommend this game. Go! Go print it out, get your little tokens and your d6, and see what I'm talking about here. This is an excellent game, and um, Morton Monrad Peterson should be very proud of what he's done here. Next time, I'm going to review his Ultima expansion for the Viticulture game as part of the Tuscany expansion. <laughs>